It's the biggest culinary competition in Canada. And for three seasons, the country's best home cooks have been invited to Toronto to make their signature dish for the MasterChef Canada judges. Michael Bonaccini. Delicious, so it's a big yes from me. Alvin Long. It's a yes from me as well. And Claudio Aprile. It's an absolute yes. But this year, everything has changed. And it all starts with a box. Inside is one of the world's most popular ingredients, rice. It's a staple found in every country, every culture, and every cuisine. Receiving this special box of rice will be 24 finalists selected from thousands of applicants. For the first time ever, the audition won't start in the MasterChef Canada kitchen. Instead, this season's debut challenge is coming directly to them. Each home cook will have to decide on a rice dish that showcases their creativity and skill. The quest for Canada's next master chef has now begun. The selected home cooks have no idea that this first and very decisive challenge is on the way. It will be the first step towards achieving their dream, and it will determine whether or not they earn the coveted white apron. The messengers are about to knock on doors all across the country, and behind one of them, is the next Master Chef Canada. Special delivery. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Miranda? Yes. This is for you from Master Chef Canada. Oh, wow. Hi, Chris. <laughs> I have a surprise for you from Master Chef Canada. Whoa. This is for you from Master Chef Canada. Oh, my goodness. Hello. Hi. This is from Master Chef Canada. Oh, my it's goodness. For you. Really? This is for you from Master Chef Canada. Oh, wow. Oh, thank you. I have a surprise for what you. What is this? Oh, my God. What? Oh, wow. This is for you. Oh, my God. What is it? <laughs> I'm kind of nervous straight out. Let's open it up. What? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my God. <gasps> Dear Home Cook. Congratulations, you have been selected. Oh my god, I'm going to tear up. <laughs> Congratulations, you have been selected from thousands of applicants from across the country. To audition for the MasterChef Canada judges. And surprise, your audition starts now. <laughs> now. What? Uh, like, right now? Stop it. The judges want to see what you can do with, with one of the world's most popular ingredients. Right. Right. Rice. It's a staple found around the globe in almost every home and every culture. The possibilities are endless. You'll cook your rice dish in the MasterChef Canada kitchen. But today, you have to decide what you will make. And you'll only have 20 minutes to gather all your ingredients. Wow, I'm at a school. I'm in a machine shop. Where, <laughs> where am I going to find ingredients? You can get them from your cupboard, your fridge, a neighbor, or your local grocery store. But don't waste a single second, because your MasterChef Canada journey starts now. 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 Good luck. Whoa. Oh, my god. <laughs> what am I gonna make? I'm gonna make, uh, I can make risotto. Am I really supposed to decide right now? This is crazy. Oh my god, oh my god. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Only 20 minutes. Garlic, onion, let's take it all. Go, 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 go. Grab everything you can. Go, 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 go. To add some acidity, let's get some citric acid in here. We have an emergency. I have to get all my ingredients in 20 minutes. Do you have any meat? Because I don't have any mushrooms. Sorry, dude. Carrots, something that I can quick pickle. Oh my god, you're a lifesaver. There's no ginger. How much time do I have left? Oh my god. Still master show, she's like me in. Got everything I need. I think that's it. We got this, we got this. That was like insane. Time is up and it's time to go. The 
the country's top 24 home cooks have brought their ingredients to the Master Chef Canada kitchen in Toronto. This kitchen is huge! I see all the stations, the gallery, the M. It's bonkers! They're here to cook their rice dishes for the judges and earn a coveted white apron. Oh my God, look at the aprons are there! The aprons are at the front and I definitely want one of those. I've come from my little kitchen in Iqaluit, Nunavut. It's time for an indigenous woman to win the title. I was on a construction site and now I'm standing in the MasterChef Canada kitchen. It's go time. The MasterChef judges are such idols of mine, and I am like 10 feet away from them. It is crazy. These are rock stars of Canadian cooking. They're the best of the best. Welcome to the MasterChef Canada kitchen. You're all here because you have one thing in common. You're the best home cooks in the country. But you're not here to share recipes. You're here to beat every other home cook in this kitchen, to win $100,000 and become Canada's next master chef. I absolutely know I have what it takes to be master chef Canada. I've been training for this my whole life. 24 of you made it this far, but in order to go any further, you must earn one of these white aprons. And this year, there are only 12 of them up for grabs. I'm a numbers guy. 50% of us are going home. That's not good odds. And the battle for them has already begun with the rice dish that you conceived of back home. There, you had 20 minutes to gather the ingredients. Now, you have 60 minutes to use those ingredients to cook us the best rice dish we've ever tasted. After the challenge, only those with the strongest dishes will move forward in this competition. You have two burners at your station, premium German-made Mila appliances, and a small staple pantry. Are you ready to make us a rice dish that shows us that you deserve to be here? Yes! Your 60 minutes starts now! Oh my god. Okay. This got real, real fast. This is crazy. Oh my gosh. Measuring cups, measuring cups. Anyone seen them? Where are the bowls? Does anyone know where the bowls are? Okay. This kitchen is completely buzzing. Everyone is freaking out. My heart is exactly 224 beats right now. <laughs> Pretty hard attack. We've never seen 24 home cooks in this one kitchen at the same time. It's absolutely astonishing. They really had to set themselves apart here and really shine for us to take notice of who they are. I'm doing a Korean bibimbap. There's only 12 aprons. There's a lot of great chefs here, but I know I deserve that apron. The other home cooks need to look out for me as the oldest person in the room. I got the most experience. I'm going to be the next MasterChef Canada winner right here. There's just 12 apron to give away. So much riding on this one rice dish. This apron is everything. This is uh, gonna set the rest of my life. Right out of high school, I had the opportunity to go to culinary school. I opted to go and make money in the construction business. I regret that decision every single day of my life. I need this because this could launch my dream of opening my own restaurant. I'm a cancer survivor. I know life is short, and now I know I really need to do this for myself. I really want to make it to the top 12 and win the title of Master Chef Canada. Rice is that blank canvas. I'm looking for ingredients that are gonna elevate that rice dish to take it from the normal to the extraordinary. Today I'm gonna make a squid ink risotto. I want my risotto to stand out amongst the rest and be bold and unique, just like me. My mom and I had always talked about having our own restaurant. Those plans have changed. She was diagnosed with early onset Alzheimer's. I definitely want to win MasterChef Canada and be able to open my own restaurant and kind of live out what me and my mom always wanted. Oh, you know I'm getting that apron today. I am doing a Asian-inspired lobster risotto. My dish requires so many steps. 
I'm so behind already. I know I have to go faster than I usually do. Medic! Ooh, Maze cut her finger. It looks bad. This is the worst cut that I've ever had. Ah! Kim, how you doing? Hi, Chef Kyle. You all right? Hi there, Jason. Hey. It's an honor to meet you. Delighted to hear that. Chris. Chef Alvin, how are you? You're cooking for the demon chef. Are you nervous? I am a little flustered. I don't want to let you down. Tell me about your dish. I am making a deconstructed cabbage roll. Sounds interesting and different. <laughs> I'm making curry pork with onion bhaji and a saffron rice. Hey, uh, what are you making? Curry rice dish with a seared scallop. Ikaluk, which is the Inuit word for Arctic char. What is this dish going to tell us about you? Dealing with food and just spices and flavors, that's how I travel. Coming from Winnipeg, Manitoba, there are cold, hardy winters, and you need something like this to warm you up. I'll be presenting the char as close to how Inuit eat it traditionally. This kind of represents me as a chef. I tell you, Trevor, you're not a chef yet. You're a home cook. Justine, your station looks a little messy. I am overwhelmed. I have a lot of things going on, but mm -hmm. all amazing things that I hope will impress you. How are you going to impress me with this fish? When faced with adversity, that's where I shine. I'm actually allergic to shellfish, so I thought I'd push myself a little bit further and never cook with it. You sure that's a smart move for your first challenge in this kitchen? Go big or go home. I'm excited. I look forward to trying. Nice to meet you, Sheila. Oh my goodness, he just spoke to me. Ten minutes! We're seeing Canada on 24 plates. Whether you live in the East Coast, West Coast, up in the North Territories, or the prairies, Rice is a part of our culinary fabric. We're seeing so many different diverse cultures. It is beautiful to watch. I am making rice and peas with chicken. I'm cooking a Jamaican dish that's inspired by my grandma. I want to bring a little of my culture into the mix. <laughs> to me, it's just a comfort food. It reminds me of my family, and you know, this, that's who I'm here for. I'm a makeup artist, but food is my greatest love. I'm gonna be making a chicken biryani. My food dream is to build my brand. I wanna have restaurants, I wanna have cookbooks. I wanna do it all. I need that apron. I am making a pineapple seafood fried rice. I am a doctorate student in critical care medicine. Switching that white lab coat into that white apron is going to mean the world to me. The biggest obstacle to come here happened two weeks ago. My dad actually just had a heart attack. I had to make a decision of whether or not I continue to come here or I stay by my dad's side. Family is really important to me, but my dream is also equally important. And my dad said, just pursue whatever makes you happy. This is what MasterChef is all about. It's no playtime, it's game time. I'm freaking out. Feeling great, feeling excited, feeling pumped. My food dream is to win MasterChef Canada and open a restaurant in Montreal. Today I'm making a seafood paella. This dish means everything to me. I'm director of operations for my family business, but I'd like to be a restaurateur. You know, I gave up my passion for my family responsibilities about 12 years ago, and this is my chance to reclaim that. Better believe I'm gonna get an apron today. Two minutes! You have two minutes left! Here we go. Oh, shit. My rice burns. That's not good. Running out of time. I'm gonna do the best I can. A little bit overdone. <laughs> oh well. I burnt my salad, which is not good. Oh man, this is way harder than I thought. You have one minute left! Let's do this. Finish strong, people. Finish strong. I can't wait to start tasting some of these rice dishes. Sexy, sexy, sexy. Okay, Jordan, you got this. Stay together. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six. Five, four, three, two, one. Heads up! Wow. Good job, brother. Oh. Nice job, everyone. We're excited to taste every one of your dishes. But before we do that, please cover your dish with the cloche at your station and leave the kitchen. I'm definitely a little anxious and worried, but I do as they say. Walking out of this kitchen, I feel like I've done just enough to get a white apron here today.
This rice dish is now the most important thing in my life. The judges will now taste all 24 dishes and decide the fate of 24 very nervous home cooks. I made chicken biryani. The flavors are there, and I know that the judges will love it. I am thrilled with my paella. The colors are popping. The seafood looks lovely. I couldn't be prouder. I don't know. I'm on the fence. It's got some good elements to it. I'm worried about the lack of rice on the plate, but I hope beyond all hopes that I get a white apron. I don't get this. The rice is really bland. Yeah. I want to see more. It would be so great if this dish gets me through to the next level. It's a damn good result, though. Everyone has put their best foot forward, and we're just going to have to see what happens. I walk into the kitchen, and I see cloches on some stations and none on some stations. Welcome back, everyone. There's no cloche at my station. Is my food that bad that they had to throw it in the garbage? Is the cloche a good thing? Is it a bad thing? What is going on right now? Like, seriously. You've just participated in a truly original MasterChef Canada audition. If you see a cloche on your station, do not touch it. If your station has been cleared, please come up to the front. My heart is beating out of my chest. I am freaking out. Being chosen to compete against the best of the best is something you should all be very proud of. Every year, home cooks raise the bar, making it that much more difficult to succeed. I'm going home. This is the bottom eight. Your dishes were the very best. So relieved, so happy. It feels so good. You have each earned a spot in the top 12. Top 12. I did it. This is my apron. You need to step out of the way, because Miranda is here to stay. Booyah! I came here to get a MasterChef Canada white apron. Now I need to keep moving forward. I want to make it all the way to the end. Those of you still at your stations, the rice dishes you made were not the best. But some of them were good enough to earn you a second chance to win a white apron. Your fate in this competition lies under the cloche in front of your station. If your rice dish is still there, you have the opportunity to move forward. However, if there's nothing underneath your cloche, we're sorry, but your journey here is over. I'm a paramedic. I'm used to pressure, but this is insane. I want to pick up that cloche, and I want to see my plate. At the count of three, lift your cloche. One. My gut is telling me that my plate is there. Two. I'm hoping that the judges will say yes to Sheila. Three. I am shaking. I feel my dream is slipping out of my fingers. Lift. <sighs> Those of you whose dishes have been cleared away, we're sorry, but it's time to say goodbye. Please do remember how far you've come and please keep cooking. I'm gonna hold my head up high, and I know I'm still a warrior in the kitchen. I am so proud of myself to have followed my passion, and I hope it inspires other Inuit women to do the same. Congratulations to the eight of you still standing, but you still need to convince us that you deserve a white apron and a place in the top 12. Please come up to the front. I'm still here. I'm getting one of those aprons. There are four aprons left. 
I love this opportunity that I have a second chance, but I'm pissed off that I didn't get it on the first chance. Everything is riding on this next cook. If you think it's been a roller coaster so far, you should know this ride is far from over. In the last cook, you chose your own ingredients. For this next challenge, we have done the shopping for you. Over here are three sets of portable pantries. Each has been stocked with ingredients that speak to our particular culinary passions. Huge boxes with their names on it. I'm just thinking what's going to be in there. We're giving you 60 minutes. We want you to choose one of our pantries and cook us a dish that beautifully showcases our favorite flavor profiles. If you're excited by bold South American flavors, I suggest you choose mine. If you enjoy the fresh market flavors of Italy and France, and let's face it, who doesn't? Then you'll be very happy with my European pantry as your inspiration. If you don't choose my Asian pantry, I might get upset. And you don't want me upset. Are you ready to choose your pantry and earn yourself the Covenant White Apron? Yes, sir! Your 60 minutes starts now! Jay and Matt chose my pantry. I love Alvin. He's like an inspiration at the same time. He freaks me out. <sighs> and I see gooseberry. I see fish sauce and things that I, I use a lot. But then the duck breast and the prawns. And I'm thinking to myself, great, what have I got myself into? This is absolutely do or die for me right now. I got to figure out what I'm doing, and I got to get it on a plate. I chose Chef Michael's pantry because I'm a French Canadian, so French cuisine has always been very big in my family. Chef Michael's pantry suits my cooking style to a T. I see veal chop, langoustine, pancetta, parmesan, ricotta, blue cheese. More than half picked my pantry. Pancetta. Michael, you won this time. It was a landslide. What is this? I should have picked Alvin's pantry. I would have knocked duck out the box. I'm a hunter. I cook with it every week. This isn't stressful at all. Taya was the only home cook brave enough to take on my pantry. I see mango and pineapple. I'm starting right now on a mango salsa, and then I think I'm going to use pork belly. These are exciting ingredients to work with, but maybe a little bit intimidating as well. It's definitely a risk, but I'm hoping that I will stand out at the rest. My rice dish wasn't up to par. It means so much to me to have a second chance. I feel like I do well with second chances. When I was 23, I got married. We were married a very short amount of time. I essentially just walked away from everything, and I had no financial help. And I just pushed through. I think it gives me more drive and more fuel to just succeed more. I know this dish is enough to get me a white apron. I'm feeling inspired by Chef Michael's pantry. I'm going to make quiche with lovely spice in it, and the judges are going to love it. I am the proud father of six children. For me, doing this is to show my children and family that nothing is too late. I'm totally getting the white apron. Yeah. There are so many choices of wonderful ingredients that you could make any number of dishes. I'm going to make an herb ricotta gnocchi and serve it with that lovely veal chop. I like the good things in life, the best food, the best wine, the best golf courses. I got this. Now, in my Asian pantry, there is good old duck breast. You know, looks simple, difficult to cook, especially under a time crunch. I never really cooked with duck before, but like I know the basics, so I'm going to have to hustle, 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 and figure this out as I go. My son is the main reason I'm here. When he says, Daddy, no one cooks as good as you, maybe he's lying, but I don't care. I love it, and I believe him. <laughs> He's got the knife skills. Wow, wow Jay. Jay! Do it for the motherland, you know what I mean? Yes! <laughs> I have Chef Michael's pantry. I am making a pasta puttanesca. This is the most nervous I've ever been in my entire life. I've been trying to figure out what I want to do for my whole life. I had an office job. I was an event planner. I keep coming back to food over and over again, and I need to pursue it. The career of my dreams is riding on this. 30! 
minutes. You have 30 minutes left. I'm feeling pretty good now that I know what I'm doing with my life. I'm gonna do a pomegranate apple fennel slaw with my pork. I'm gonna win MasterChef Canada for Alberta. Hey there, Chris. Hello, Chef Michael. How are you today? I am well. How about you? I started off a little flustered. Why were you yeah. flustered? I don't really eat a lot of pork. I'm more of a game guy. Uh, where is the pork? This is a pork chop. No, 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 that is veal. I should know that. That changes absolutely everything. I got to figure out a game plan fast, or there is no white apron in my future. You're a hunter. You know how to work with meat. Use your instinct. Use your gut. And pull the rabbit out of the hat. Thank you, chef. Good luck with that. I am coming out of this battle with a white apron. When Bonaccini gives you lemons, you make a veal cutlet. 15 minutes, chef. 15 minutes. You guys having fun up there? You want to switch places? Take off that apron. It's making me nervous, because these are our competitors. They're good. They're very good, all of them. Jay. How are hey, you, Jay, Chef? How are you doing? I'm good, sir. I'm happy you chose my pantry. I've been a big fan of yours. My son always asks about you, and he's like, hey, that guy's mean. Your sons think I'm mean? Am I supposed to be nice to you now? I sure <laughs> hope so. Tell me what you're making. Well, I've decided to sear that duck breast, and then okay. I'm going to let it uh, warm up some more in the oven near the end so it won't be overcooked. Mm. So what's in here? Ginger, scallions, gooseberry, and soy. Mm. I like that. I like that. It's got oh. good flavor. And I'm saying that not just to be nice. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank good you, luck. Chef. Wow, that was scary. Justine, how are you? Hi, Chef. What are you making here? I'm doing a crepe whipped cream with blue cheese. Do you have some langoustines? Yes, butter poached oats. Sounds uh, ambitious. You don't uh, seem very nervous at all. How come? No, this is what I make at home. Well, I hope you can back that confidence up. I will. I am getting that apron. There's no doubt about it. Brad, Chef Alvin, tell me why my pantry? Well, when I was uh, in grade 11, I went with my best friend to Hong Kong for three weeks. Completely opened up my culinary pantry for me, and that's how I've cooked ever since then. Fantastic. Tell me what you're doing. Sesame crust duck breast. You can do mommy dressing for that with some apricot, a little bit of the fish sauce. Sounds impressive. Okay. Can I taste what's in that blender? Absolutely. Mm. You know, I like that. I like that. Thank you, Chef Alvin. Appreciate that. Good luck. Chef Alvin liked the sauce, so that's good. Five minutes. You have five minutes left. I'm just really trying to hold off on pulling out my pork because I want to make sure that it's cooked all the way. Have a look over at Justine's station. She seems to be taking on a lot of different techniques. I'm putting everything on the line. I'm cooking for my life. Jay, the sauce, beautiful. Only problem is I am suspicious that the duck looks a little bit overcooked. Mm. Matt, on the other hand, duck, nicely cooked. He knows what he's doing. He's very confident. I'm going to try and get this nicely plated here down to the wire. Two minutes! Whoa. OK, that should come out. You should be plating now. My biggest concern is the time right now. It's really ticking. I haven't even thought about plating. Shoot, it's still chewy. It's because it's not cooked all the way. If I cut it up right now and toss it in the sauce, I might be OK. One minute. Beautiful plate. Show us you deserve that white apron. They're not moving fast enough. They need to hustle. I'm the Alberta boy. If I screw up this protein, it's all over for me. Ten, nine, eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hey, up! Wow. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. I missed out on my sauce that I wanted to go with the duck. I'm pretty disappointed in myself. And I'm not too confident in my plating, but I'm pretty sure I cooked that veal to be perfect. During the challenge, we watched, we discussed, and we learned a lot about what each of you bring to this kitchen. Matt and Justine, we're not going to taste your dishes. I have no clue what's going on. They're not going to taste our dish? 
based on what we've seen, we've already decided that you both deserve a spot in the top 12. <laughs> yeah. Please come up and get your aprons. I'm in the top 12 of MasterChef Canada. Everything I worked for just paid off. Top 12 MasterChef Canada! I did it. This is the catalyst to the rest of my life, and I'm so excited for that. Now, there's six of you left vying for only two coveted spots. There is a lot riding on these tastings. Jay, please bring up your dish. The sauce is supposed to be the best part of my dish. Just knowing that I messed up, it's tough. What do you have here? It's fried duck breast on uh, chow mein. You sound a bit nervous. What's wrong? I forgot to put my sauce over it. You forgot the sauce. That is going to make a big difference. Sorry, chef. How did you do the noodles? I boiled it and then fried it with uh, sesame oil and a marin and some soy. Kind of like a braised noodle, right? Yeah, so. Great texture, nice flavor, good balance. Cooked perfectly. Thank you. It's dry. You should never slice a duck breast open and let it rest because all that juice is going to bleed away. And that's exactly what happened. Unfortunately, with the sauce not around, it lacks a bit of taste. It's going to be a hard one for me. Thank you, chef. Jillian, please bring up your dish. What do you have here? I have a pine nut and herb veal chop with puttanesca pasta. How many times have you cooked a veal chop? Never. I'm really hoping I didn't jump the gun and pull it out of the oven too soon. What's your instinct telling you right now? It's a little underdone. What does it mean to you to be in this kitchen? It means everything to me. This is my dream. Well, there's a lot riding on this dish. That's what I call perfection. It's a relief. <laughs> you like garlic? I love garlic. Wow. You know, that garlic just seems to overpower the entire dish, unfortunately. Everything else is just hiding. Yes, Chef. Barry, please bring up your dish. Chef, I have for you a pine nut and herb crusted veal chop and ricotta gnocchi. Have you made gnocchi before? Once before. Not loving those gnocchi. A little on the dense side. What is the cook that you're hoping for on the veal chop? Medium rare. I like that. I would definitely call that medium rare. Right on the money. The sauce is actually very good. Thank you, it chef. could do with just a little bit more balance because cream-based sauces are very, very rich. But all in all, not a bad effort. Thank you, chef. The star of the dish is cooked properly. But I'm no longer 100% confident. Me, nee, please bring up your dish. Chef, I have here on my plate quiche, couscous salad with pine nut and then I have a veal with thyme, sage, and uh, steamed apple. There's a lot on this plate. I, I'm from a big family, and I've always cooked for my six beautiful kids. You have six kids? Six beautiful kids. You've been so busy. How do you find time to cook? <laughs> it's my passion. Making kids or cooking? No, cooking, chef. <laughs> <laughs> cooking. Cooking is my passion, chef. Have you ever cooked for you before? Never, chef. The veal. Nice flavor. It's good. It's not great. Let's do the couscous. Mm. 
this is just very dry, very bland. Yes, Chef. Did you dress it with anything? Not at all, Chef. None at all? The time was that. You ran out of time. Out of time. You ran out of time. Well, that's the problem. I'd rather see one or two things done beautifully. Less is more. Thank you, Chef. Chris, please bring up your dish. I am excited. This is a dream come true, but also I could be going home. I did a lemon tarragon uh, veal chop, apple and roasted root vegetables with uh, lard. And we're sure it's a veal chop this time. We are. <laughs> Absolutely, chef. Did that throw you off somewhat? A little bit, but once I knew what I was cooking with, I got, I got a lot more confident. Because you know meat. You're a hunter. I am. I'm not afraid to handle protein, chef. On the plating, it does look a little bit... A little rustic. A little rustic <laughs> is a good way to describe it. I think had you done a little bit of a, a little pile and had that chop sitting up on it, get a little bit of elevation, it would have enhanced the presentation. You know, I'm hoping that this is going to be cooked. A nice rosé pink on the inside. Yes, chef. You happy with that? No, I'm not. It's a little overdone. Let's see how it tastes. Surprisingly, very good with a simple seasoning that you put on there. For me, it's all about the presentation where you have fallen flat. I'm here to learn. That's my primary focus here. I hope so. Taya, please bring up your dish. I would be mortified if I disappointed Chef Claudio with his own ingredients. Walk me through this dish. Well, I was trying to go for a tostada. I wanted to do a spicy pork belly mole. Have you made mole before? I've never made mole before. I think mole is the most difficult sauce to make. You took a huge risk. I did. You know, the plating needs work. It needs to be more refined. I just felt like I didn't have enough time to really think it through. For me, this dish is a complete knockout. It is next level. Oh my God. Extraordinary. <laughs> it's incredible. I can't believe you pulled that off in such a short period of time. Thank you. It is succulent. It is very juicy and wonderful flavor profile. Oh my God, thank you so much. I am freaking out. I'm freaking out. Unfortunately, only two of you will have a chance to keep pursuing your MasterChef Canada dreams. And now we have to make that difficult decision. Please excuse us. This is my moment to soak in everything about the MasterChef kitchen, because this very well could be the last time I see it. There are some that I think overstretched themselves with trying to do too much on a plate, and there are others that kept it a lot simpler and true to the vision of the pantry. I really think I deserve one of those aprons. I've tried really hard to get here. At the end of the day, sometimes passion isn't quite enough. I agree, we need skill. Drive and the belief that you can go to the next level. This cook was a struggle for me. I am terrified I could be going home. Calling 24 home cooks down to 12 has not been easy. You should all be very pleased with yourselves for making it this far. But now, as you know, there are only two white aprons left. Those aprons will go to the two home cooks that demonstrated the most skill, creativity, and potential. And those two home cooks are... Barry and Taya. Oh I got an apron! Congratulations. This is the best moment of my life. I can't even get this grin off my face. <laughs> I have always believed in my ability to cook. And now three of the best chefs in Canada have agreed. Oh my gosh.
The rest of you, I know that this isn't the result that you'd hoped for, but please think about what it is that you've achieved. Coming this far is not to be taken lightly. You've made your families and your hometowns very, very proud. Thank you, guys. This was an unbelievable experience for me that I will remember for the rest of my life. I never lived a dream before, and I lived it. Everybody, up in that gallery, get down here. This is the cream of the crop. I'm gonna cook my heart out. I'm gonna show these judges that I deserve to be not only top 12, but top 10, top eight, top three, and then number one. Congratulations, everyone. You are the top 12. <laughs> one of you is Canada's next master chef. Are you ready? Yes! This season on MasterChef Canada, the best home cooks in the country will reach for the stars. Please help us welcome Jamie Oliver. Hi, hey, folks. With a series of amazing challenges. Are you guys hungry? You're running out of time. Let's go. Pick it up, Tim. Get them on the pan right now. That will push them harder than ever before. Look at it. It's smoking. I'm not happy with it. Send it back. <gasps> In an epic quest for the ultimate prize. Everyone has dreams. Everyone has a reason to be here. I know what it takes to win. I came here to accomplish a goal. I'm going to be the next master chef. 